Butter is great and all, but if you've never had cultured butter, you're missing out. It's so much richer and tangier than any normal butter, and it's actually a lot easier to make than you probably think. The process is actually really simple, but it does take a few days because we'll have to allow the butter to develop its tangy flavor over time. So for the basic recipe, you'll only need two ingredients, heavy whipping cream and cultured buttermilk. Make sure to use cultured buttermilk because we need it to contain some friendly bacteria in order for the fermentation to work properly. So start with a clean sanitized jar and add 32 ounces of heavy whipping cream and two ounces or one quarter cup of cultured buttermilk. It's very important to sanitize your jar because like I said, there's gonna be bacterial activity here and we only want the good bacteria to be present. If there's any sort of contamination in your jar, it could cause mold or other harmful organisms to grow. So to sanitize, you can use an antibacterial soap or cleaning solution or just run the jar through a cycle in the dishwasher. Anyways, once the cream and buttermilk are added, all that's left to do for today is stir to combine, then cover the jar with a loosely fitting lid to allow gases to escape during the fermentation process. Then just leave the jar out at room temperature for anywhere from about two to five days, depending on how tangy you want your butter to end up. You could technically let it go for longer than that, but I like to keep it on the shorter side just to further ensure that mold doesn't start to grow. So now here we are two days later in this case, and you can see that my cream mixture has started to solidify a bit, which is what we want. It should have a nice funky smell to it at this point, and it should be noticeably more tangy than it was at the beginning. Now in order to turn this cream mixture into butter, we'll just need to whip it vigorously to separate out the fat. In this case, I'm using a stand mixer, but you could also use a food processor or even whisk it by hand if you're up for the task. Either way, you'll want to start whipping the mixture on a medium to high speed, and after not too long, you'll see little chunks of butter start to separate from the buttermilk. It'll get a bit messy at this point if your bowl isn't covered, so make sure to be prepared with a large enough towel to prevent it from splashing all over the place. So what we just did here was whip some air into the mixture, which allows the fat particles to stick together. So now essentially we're left with our butter swimming in a pool of fat-free buttermilk. So the next thing we have to do is separate out that butter. To do this, get out a large mesh strainer and line it with a cheesecloth, then set it over a bowl and pour your butter mixture in, allowing the buttermilk to drain out. I usually let it sit for about 15 minutes, stirring it around as necessary to allow the liquid to find its way to the bottom. Then once it's thickened up a bit, I just pour my butter straight into the strainer to get out the last bits of buttermilk. If you don't have a fine enough strainer, you don't have to do it this way though because you wouldn't want the butter to slip through the cracks you could just skip straight to the next step. So once that's done, set aside your bowl of buttermilk because you can actually transfer it to a jar and save it in your fridge for later use. Then take your nice clump of butter and transfer it to yet another bowl, this time one filled with cold water, which is again gonna help us get out even more of that buttermilk. So just press on the butter to expel as much of the buttermilk as possible, then refill the bowl with cold water and repeat as many times as necessary until the water runs clear. It's very important to expel as much of the buttermilk as possible because buttermilk goes rancid much quicker than the butter itself, so removing the buttermilk will help the butter to stay fresh for much longer. Now once that's done, you're left with your unsalted cultured butter, which is great just like this, but you can also fold in a bit of salt here if you want salted butter. So I added just a couple teaspoons of kosher salt and placed about half of that butter into a container, but we're not gonna stop there. I'm also gonna show you how to flavor your butter with herbs and other spices. In this case, I'm making a pesto inspired garlic basil butter, but you can really mix in any herbs or other ingredients that you want to at this point. You can make a rosemary or sage butter, garlic herb butter as I'm doing here, or even cinnamon sugar butter for spreading onto toast or bagels. Just feel free to get creative with it. For this recipe though, I'm gonna add a total of four cloves of grated garlic, along with about 10 leaves of finely chopped basil. Now, the butter will harden a bit when cooled in the fridge, just like any other butter, but if you've done a good job of expelling the excess buttermilk, it'll stay good for at least a few days at room temperature without the risk of growing mold. So personally, I'd recommend keeping a little bit outside of the fridge at a time to let it soften and become spreadable, then keep the rest in your fridge or even in the freezer until you're actually ready to use it. Cultured butter is way more flavorful than any typical butter, especially when you make it yourself, and it's the perfect complement to a freshly baked loaf of sourdough bread. So if you want to learn how to make some basic sourdough bread to go with it, be sure to click that video on the bottom right corner of the screen.